All right, today we are going to start talking about our final project for medical illustration. And for that project, we are going to let artwork and medical illustration collide into one another. Um, it turns out that artists have been inspired by the human body for centuries. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, against law at the time in the 1400s, would steal bodies from the morgue and take them home and dissect them in his one room apartment by candlelight and draw the parts. His sketchbooks from that time period are some of the most thorough medical illustrations um, still that have been made. And he could have gone to prison for it and his illustrations were well beyond medical information at the time. Doctors at that point uh, felt the human body was sacred and they could not explore it fully. They didn't understand how the human body worked. Most of their ideas were based on uh, how a pig's body worked. Um, and for actually for a couple of hundred years, artists were more advanced in their medical knowledge than doctors were. So art actually is what caused medicine to push forward in the 1500s. Um, and so artists then have just sort of always been ex inspired by humanity, by the body, by how the body works, by the anatomy of the human body. And I want you to take inspiration from some aspect or aspects of the human body and create your own uh, medical illustration inspired piece of artwork. What does that mean? Um, this is your chance to combine everything we've learned in medical illustration and your own personal artistic vision. We are still going to use accurate illustrative techniques. Um, so, and then our art supplies are going to focus on pen techniques and watercolor because those are the ones that we have had time to cover in class. Uh, I would be open to exploring uh, individual options for you with art supplies. You would just have to have a chat with me. Uh, and we will talk about the pencil that I gave you and that it turns into watercolor. Um, and then you're going to combine your own kind of artistic and personal vision and flair. Okay. All the examples in the PowerPoint are actually from current artists that are working in this space, the space between medical and scientific illustration and artwork. And they are all working in their own unique way. So uh, this artist on the screen right now, her name is Lisa Nielsen, and she is working in something called paper quilling. And she does these incredibly detailed body slice illustrations using um, paper, little tiny strips of paper. So you can see a couple of examples of her work here on the page. Um, these are Tom Brown. Uh, this is his collection from 2018, so fairly recently. All of his fashions uh, in that collection were very macabre and very much so about the human body. So we have dangling intestines on the back of a coat, uh, beaded skeletons. Uh, the, the coat on the right-hand side of the screen is a fully embroidered um, from the front, it's like a trench coat. Um, the sculpture in the middle of the screen is made out of uh, fabric and wire. And so you can see that artists are really, they're inside this space that the human body uh, is interesting. An artist that you guys have maybe heard of before is Frida Kahlo. Uh, Frida Kahlo herself, um, I don't have any examples of her work, but she herself had a lot of medical problems and she painted from her bed. Um, and she has many, many self portraits of herself operating on herself, um, holding organs. Uh, so her personal medical problems and history impacted her artwork as an artist. And I think that's fairly normal. So here's some other illustrations, um, like I said, in kind of this space where we're combining uh, just personally unique artwork with medical illustration. Uh, I can't remember this guy's name right now. 
he's an Italian painter. And he also is using layers. So, so the illustration on the right hand side, uh, part of that has got that transparent like layer sheet over it. So that's something you want to think about too, is how can you like be influenced even by the techniques from medical illustration, right? That accuracy component, the layering component. These are all kind of interesting uh, facets of medical illustration that you can work in. Some more examples just to kind of get your brain thinking I one thing I don't want you to do is I don't want you to find an illustration or find something that you like online and just copy it that is definitely not what I want you to do I want you to be influenced or to combine the idea of medical illustration somehow with something that you find uniquely interesting so the piece of art on the right hand side of the page is actually from my own personal portfolio and combining medical illustration with just my own um, art art that I'm working on right now. And that does have two layers. So the pen illustration is on the front like clear or transparent layer and the bottom layer is the watercolored layer, much like how we're working. Um, and it is just, it's packed with uh, symbols and symbolism uh, from my life and from um, just who I am as a person. And so uh, that's a space that I work in fairly frequently. And I like some of the medical illustration components and what they add to a piece of artwork. So here is what we're going to do today. Today, we're going to begin planning your final project. And today, uh, I want you to kind of play around with ideas. And for some of you, maybe you have an idea right away, just looking at some of the examples that I just showed you. And you're going to be able to grab your sketchbook and start sketching out like some ideas for this project. And that's amazing. Some of you might have to do a little bit of research first, um, whether that research is into artists, whether it's an artist that's working in the medical art juxtaposition sort of field, or whether it's just um, you need to look at some artwork to be inspired. Uh, maybe some of you will want to do some research on uh, like the medical component first. Like if you want to do like the respiratory system and the heart and lungs, maybe you're gonna look at some medical illustrations or some images of the heart and lungs first um, before you decide on your idea. Um, maybe you, some of you have your own um, unique idea for this just based on your own personal uh, medical history uh, but I want you to kind of play with ideas. So we're gonna go back to our sketchbook and we're gonna go back to the idea of thumbnail sketches, something that we have done uh, for every project. And we're going to explore four different ideas with a sketch, okay? So these are four different ideas sketched out, remembering that we wanna think about how we're using our paper, um, composition is gonna be part of it, but I want you to have some rough ideas and um, it maybe it's the same idea in all four and you're just exploring it four different ways, okay? Starting tomorrow and into Thursday, we're gonna do some research. Um, and that research obviously will be on the chosen medical component. You're gonna need to find some reference images for yourself. Um, those reference images need to be from copyright free sources and so we need to make sure that we're using uh, things that don't belong to somebody else. So I don't want you to take a medical illustration or an art project that you find and just copy. That is plagiarism, okay? So I want you to be using your own unique source material and your own unique idea or your own spin on an idea. So I should not be able to find your work if I search Google or Pinterest, okay? And I will post some links to some copyright free sources. There are some copyright free image sources um, that search just like Google does and there is a copyright free um, medical, uh, medical imagery. 
Um, I have a cadaver book, so if you need specific images, I'm happy to share those with you. Uh, starting then on Thursday and Friday, we're gonna like experiment with some materials. I'm gonna talk to you about that pencil that I put in your kit. We're gonna kind of explore some options art supply-wise. Uh, with a goal that we are ready, we have our final, we know what we're going to do for our project, we have all the reference images that we needed, and we are ready to begin this final and last illustration no later than Monday so that you have two full weeks to work on this. So go ahead, grab your sketchbook, and start your planning.